we do take clean water for granted. Look how many faucets we have in our houses. We just don't even think about it. But in so many parts of rural Africa, clean water is not to be taken for granted. They don't have it. So we did go to a new community this last year called Lesson Coil. And this was really at the end of the earth. It was a very long, dry, bumpy, dusty road. I can't imagine living there year round. It's just so dry and they were walking six miles to get dirty river water. They're sharing the water with animals, sheep, goats, cows, wild animals. So it's not a clean water. It's not a, a clear water. And it's typically the job of the women or the young girls to walk literally miles every day and carry that jug home on their heads or on their backs or rolling it in front of them. Before we had the borehole, we had to walk for around seven kilometers, which took us around three hours in fetching the water. Our sites are very much off the grid. Nowadays we have the solar and just to have that water just gushing out of the well, just using the sun. We have a, a large tank that we'll have off to the side and we try and get that elevated and that will be the reserve for nighttime then and cloudy days. So these wells are, are just a very basic essential thing, but for many of them they see it as a miracle. An outright miracle that that they've been walking this this ground for decades and now all of a sudden water is coming out. Water is just issuing off the ground. A, a wonderful clean water that they can drink without amoeba, dysentery. Before we had the clean water, we used to suffer from some diseases like cholera, bilharzia, because of the dirty water that we used to take. But now because of the borehole, we are getting clean water and our health is very okay. And luckily, you know, we've, we've just about hit 100%. We've, we've hit water. We've had to go deeper than anticipated sometimes. The shallowest one we did this last winter was 285 feet and uh, the deepest one was 600, um, 600 feet. You know, when they blow the compressed air down, we get a huge gush, just a gush or geyser of water coming out and everyone's just celebrating. All of a sudden there is 50, 60, 100 people just coming out of the woodwork to start getting this water. They were so grateful for this clean, clean water. We had a lot of water now running, so everything is green. You've got a lot. Of we have a lot of tomatoes in the garden. We have some potatoes. They are ready now. We have started harvesting. The widows are thinking that now they have improved because they have a plenty of water. They are learning much so that they can make some small gardens in their families to provide them. It's really cool to see when we bring physical water to the people and also give them God's living water. Um, both of them are tremendously received with great gratitude in these communities. The community are very happy and they really appreciate the Kenya Hope for donating that water and putting up the bowl. They are very happy. Yeah, I want to take this opportunity lastly to thank Joy, Dave, and the entire Kenya Hope for their support. Uh, in digging the borehole here at home. I'm so much grateful. May God bless you. Thank you. There are so many communities asking for help that need help. I mean, the further we're willing to go down those dusty, bumpy, dirty roads, there is gold in the form of human souls at the end. And if we had the finances, we would go down those dirty roads, those bumpy, dusty roads, so that we could take the word of God to them and be able to give them clean water and a chance at education and a chance to change the trajectory of their lives. When you give hope to somebody, and when you feed them, when you give them water, and you feed their flocks, and, and you realize, I've done something that actually matters. And for us to be just a small part of that is, is one of the greatest blessings that, that we've ever, ever experienced.